Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. Hello, everybody. This is Sandy Weiner, and I am calling in today from Israel. I am here with my daughter and her family, and um, what's great about doing radio on the Internet is that you can call in from anywhere in the world, and so this is pretty exciting. Um, And as most of you know, I am a dating coach, I'm a love coach, I'm a communications coach at lastfirstdate.com, and I want to welcome you to Last First Date Radio We are a featured show about attracting and sustaining healthy relationships in midlife. Every week, I bring you in-depth interviews with top experts and cutting-edge authors in the field of dating and relationships. And today, I am very excited to be speaking with communication specialist and certified coach Kim Von Berg about how to attract a mate capable of a thriving relationship. As a dating coach, I love helping women over 40 become more confident and become the woman of value that attracts a healthy, lasting, loving relationship. So today's topic is right up my alley. And um, really, one of the most important things that I have discovered in my work is that we have to stop trying to be somebody else in order to hook a guy. I really want you to be authentic and show up as the real you. Um, That is probably one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is to bring more of you, bring your vulnerability, bring your essence to dating um, because that is what's going to attract the right person into your life. Every week I bring you a tip on how to be a woman of value and this week's tip is to be vulnerable. And that's pretty much what I was just talking about. So being vulnerable means sharing your feelings, sharing your must-haves, your needs, and to also be that soft place for a man to land. So this is, this is advice for women. Um, we often think we have to prove ourselves, um, but really what really attracts is vulnerability. The ability to just say, I'm scared, I'm worried, Um, I feel a little uncomfortable about this. That's what makes us feel a connection to somebody. So uh, two things, if you haven't yet signed up for my free guide, the top 10 reasons why men pull away or disappear, and how you can finally attract and keep the love you deserve, please go to my website when the show is over, lastfirstdate.com, and sign up for the free guide. I want you to stop sabotaging your love life and start taking back your control by being a true woman of value. And right before we introduce Kim, I want to just invite you, if you're not yet a member of my private Facebook group, please apply to join. It is a free group. It's called Your Last First Date. You have to remember to add the your last first date. Search in groups in Facebook and please apply to join. It is a supportive, positive place to learn how to date with dignity and be a woman of value who attracts her best partner. And now it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Kim Von Berg. She is dedicated and truly passionate about transforming the lives and relationships of singles and couples. She has owned her own business called Thriving Loving Relationships since 1997. She's a communication specialist and a certified coach. She's an NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming Practitioner, and she's also a Calling in the One certified coach. She also has a master's degree in humanistic psychology and a CA teaching credential. She has a lot of (laughs) credentials here, and I'm really excited about having her speak um, right now on episode number 252, How to Attract a Mate Capable of a Thriving Relationship. Welcome to the show, Kim. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I feel such an honor to be here. So thank you. Well, thank you. 
Well, things that already before I'm even talking to you that we're already aligned on a lot of things. So I'm excited Absolutely. to get started and, and yeah, let's just dive right in. So okay. you are passionate about helping singles and couples attract and create healthy, thriving relationships. So what what I really want to know first first of all is what drove you to do this work. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I'm going to practice discipline to have that a short version um, because it's been a, a, quite a history, as you, as you said. I started the, I actually co-began this business uh, in 1997 with my late spouse who passed away in 2008, and it was just a labor of love. And all of this really, um, this whole journey of creating something that feels like a real life calling is um, all about me uh, realizing that romantic partnership is our greatest opportunity to evolve ourselves and our hearts. You know, it, it increases our capacity to deeply love and be loved. And when we can do this with another human being, it opens the door to be able to do this with the world. So I feel so passionate about that. But my whole history has been around, um, you know, it, it came from us starting our relationship and it didn't work <laughs> initially. And mm. we did all kinds of things to try to still stay together. And we came through all of that and then decided to start offering services to others so they didn't have to go through the kind of long haul and pain that we had to go through. Um, but mm. then after my my partner's passing, um, it's been a whole journey. And I started dating at 50 years old again and realized, oh, my gosh, I don't really know how to do this very well. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it ran into some challenges with that. And tried this and that to get some help and then stumbled on Calling in the One, uh, the book, and wow, so many things changed around working that, um, process, all the processes around that. And then I decided, wow, this stuff is so good that I um, did a mentorship program with the author, Catherine Wilbur Thomas, and um, became certified as one of her Calling in the One coaches. And it's just right now I love the fact that I'm really standing for helping people to attract and create healthy, thriving, loving relationships. So that's the, that's the short version <laughs> in response to your I love your question. <laughs> that's that's quite quite a um, quite a story. So first, you know, I'm I'm sorry about your loss, and I can't imagine what it was like to have really created that relationship and then lost it and then started dating again. So, um, yeah. you know, kudos to you for, for putting the work in. So many people bail on relationships that are not thriving. Um, they right. don't take responsibility for what it is that isn't working. And um, I think we all have work to do. And it's never just one person. Even even in a an emotionally abusive relationship, there is a part that we all play, and a lot of people get mad at me for saying that, but I had to learn that the hard way, and I think that once you once you do, you're very empowered to um, to create the relationship that you really want and a relationship that will be healthy. Um, I you know, so and agree so, with that, Penny. Yeah, very yeah, true. Yeah, and and something. Right. So the other thing that I love that you said is is that it's such a global thing. It's it's not just about dating. It's not just about, you know, what happens in the dating relationship. It's really about making a difference in the world. And I think that people don't realize that when you do this work, it changes your life. It doesn't just change a, a romantic relationship. So that's, that's just an important piece that I think I, I just wanted to highlight very true. Yes. Yeah, because really yeah. I think the most beautiful of partnerships are when um you know we evolve ourselves to such a point to be able to have that level of a relationship to where it doesn't just stay in that relationship. It it changes how we relate to everyone and what we can give out in the world. So it's it's you know yeah. it's such a gem that we are given this 
this opportunity to have a partnership with another. Mm-hmm. So. And we have partnerships with, with so many people. We have partnerships with, if we have children, if we have partnerships with them and with, you know, I'm here with in Israel with my daughter and my grandchildren and my son-in-law and, you know, they're all relationships that are developing and the more loving and compassionate you can be with yourself and get rid of a lot of the past garbage, um, yes. the more open you can be to loving everybody. <laughs> and it's, uh, Absolutely. It's quite something. Yeah. Very true. Um, so let, this is a good segue to, um, to your definition of what a thriving, loving relationship is. So I'd love to hear what, what you feel that is. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um I again I need to practice a little discipline for <laughs> cuz I teach workshops <laughs> on this topic with both singles and couples. Um and what I will say that um I've I I have kind of what I call my foundation. And um before we even talk about that for <clears throat> what is a thriving loving relationship and how to establish that I I always start preface it with we need two whole healthy people <laughs> to come together mm-hmm. who already have a strong self-love and self-esteem on board um and then from there we can step into laying that foundation for a thriving loving relationship and i teach that it comes from making an equal commitment to both the individual and the relationship, and oftentimes I use the terminology of I space and we space, but there's an equal, you can think of it like a um, weight scale, there's an equal commitment to both because they both nurture each other. And we can really keep both of those spaces really healthy with a couple things I teach. Of course, there's many, many things, and I'm sure, Sandy, you teach a lot of things as well. But the ones that I focus on um, in my workshops the around the we space is really um, having a commitment to have see the positive in the other person and express genuine appreciation of one another on a regular basis and then practicing a skill that I really dive into a lot which I call deep listening and practicing that with one another it's it's removing judgment removing opinions and suggestions and just really being present with the other person and then um having an intimate connection a commitment to that where and that could be you know, sex, but touch, you know, non-sexual touch, holding, emotional. You were mentioning vulnerability. That's that's definitely in the in the arena of intimacy and connection. And then the uh, fourth component that I really teach around the we space is the um, developing a shared meaning for the relationship and a purpose that we're bringing to the world. And then around the individual component of, of that's really, really important to keep this thriving is that the individual, both individuals are committed to growth. You know, and that could be in whatever we're into. Some people it's spirituality and some people it's education, you know, academic education or it could be anything but keeping us growing as an individual and then um, a commitment to express our truth, you know, our our needs and our feelings and our thoughts, but in a way that's skillful. And I was really um, happy to hear that you're also a uh, Sandy communication coach, so you, I'm sure you teach mm-hmm. a lot around that as well, but I teach a lot of how we can do this in a way, even when we need to set boundaries, but in a way that's loving. Um, so sometimes skills need to be learned around that um and then a a commitment to our greatest self our you know the one that's really um developed in in intellectually emotionally spiritually um physically you know all all areas of, of keeping all of ourselves stepping into that healthy place and then the last component that I focus on for the individual part of it is that we're we're seeing our highest self, you know, our greatest self 
and recognize and living from that space and being willing to see that in our partner because when we can even when maybe they're doing something that you know they have a behavior that doesn't really feel like they're in their highest self being committed mm-hmm. to knowing that that's there and seeing that so when we can do all of this and nurture both components it opens the door for the the relationship to really thrive and when we are doing both they go hand in hand in creating an amazing relationship so that's all I, but as you can tell I was practicing discipline and trying to keep this a little bit <laughs> brief because it is involved you know it's very um, yes i yeah. mean this is so comprehensive and it's so um i mean if boy if everybody could do this we would have uh, incredible relationships out there because and an incre- it does incredible take- world right <laughs> Yes, incredible world. It would just yeah. be amazing, and much less fighting and misunderstandings and, you know, all the assumptions and judgments. I mean, you know, I talked about my Facebook group earlier and what some of the things that I see with, you know, over a 1,000 women in there posting all day long about their dating and relationship issues. Um, you see the ones who really are coming from a place of being whole and healthy and not making assumptions and being really open and learning and growing, and the ones who are bringing past pain to their dating lives and lack of trust, it it just, it's night and day. And you see the Uh success rate of of the two types, well, there's many more than two, but but where you're coming from, what your mindset is, how open-minded, what you're, you know, how positive you are. Um, When you're taking care and taking responsibility for your share, plus, you know, seeing the relationship as uh, as a place to be committed. I mean, you know, I think too many people don't don't look at the team. They look at themselves. You know, there's a lot of I focus and I'm not right. being, you know, my needs are not being met. And we're living in a very, very self-consumed society today. So um, I think when you practice I mean, this, deep listening, a lot of times that, that will help you get out of that, self-centeredness um, mm-hmm. because it, it's really and to me to do something like that takes a certain level what you're describing is that it takes a certain level of emotional maturity um, to mm-hmm. be able to get out of and, and really be present with another reality <laughs> in somebody else's yeah. space and and to put aside yeah, our our agenda our judgments for a moment we can go back there. not to say that we don't um, want to recognize that and sometimes express something from our own space, but to be able to put that aside for a little time and be 100% present with the other person, there's something about that that really develops the emotional muscle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so true, and and it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. It is hard, um, especially when you're upset so- with someone or you feel like you really had a mm-hmm. button pushed. It is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I get to practice that with, with my son who lives with me um, pretty much on a daily basis. And, I mean, he's he's an adult. He's 26, and he's he's living at home right now. And I do talk about him a lot on the radio. It, it's um, He happens to be an emotionally mature young man, and he really will tell me when I'm not listening. He'll say, uh-huh. can you just, you know, stop for a minute and be present with me? Can you just oh. give me a little empathy before you go on, Mom? <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's an amazing, it, it really is an amazing practice for both of us because he's going to go on to form really healthy relationships in the rest of his life. Um, and it's great practice for me because no matter how much we do this work, we still have to keep practicing. And, oh, um, absolutely. You know, so, yeah. So I, yeah, I'm really grateful for, for the practice I get. Um, <laughs> What I would love to hear um, is maybe an exercise in listening. Like, is there some little nugget that you can share with um, with our audience? Because there's so much gold in what you just shared, and I think a lot of people are going to hear this and think, oh, my God, I have to do all that. I, I'll never uh. find that. I'll never be that. Um, so what, what can you share? Because I know this is a step-by-step process. I know you and I both didn't come to this place overnight, and we're still both no. growing. 
So I think people need to know that, first of all. This, yeah. is, a, this is an ideal, and it's something to strive for. But, right. um, but I think having concrete exercises really helps to, to just take away something that they can practice today. Um, so is there something you can share uh, around listening? Absolutely. Uh, well, one thing I want to mention is that, you know, what, what I teach around the deep listening is not for every such, every single thing. You know, if somebody's just doing, let's say, facts or something kind of superficial, like I'm going to the shopping mart or, I'm, or you know, um, what my hobby is, or if you're on a dating situation, at, when it's just sort of um, the level of, of exchanging factual information, that's kind of in the realm of conversation, right? So, so the deep mm-hmm. listening, you know, to switch gears and go there when somebody shares something that's um, well, like you were just saying with your son, saying, "Can you just stop for a while?" That he's giving you a big red flag, like, "Hey, it's time for some. I, I need some deep listening." But usually mm-hmm. they're not quite so. I mean, he obviously has some skills to be able to ask for that. Not everybody has right. that that level of they but they indicate that they really could use some deep listening when when you're sensing there's some a little bit more to what they're saying than you know let's just say for example somebody says you know i i had a really um i to this day i'm still challenged by my mother <laughs> or something like that you know where mm-hmm. you kind of know oh wow there's probably a little bit more there than that statement um, that's usually mm-hmm. a time where you know to stop, stop the the back and forth conversation and be 100% present. Or if there's some emotion happening, um, but as far as you're saying maybe an exercise or something. But what I what I would suggest is if you feel like somebody's giving you something that has more behind it, to to do a practice of. First of all, checking in inside of you, because we all have a little committee always talking. I don't know about you, but I always have something that's going on (laughs) all the time. So, you know, it's like uh, it has lots of opinions and (laughs) maybe judgments. and but, But it's like the committee that's constantly talking. And so... Do Mm -hmm. an internal check-in with that to ask that committee to be quiet. To just Mm -hmm. really, and it's really what people learn around mindfulness, but it's becoming 100% present present and allowing that to be quiet. And then you are listening to what's coming in. And your goal is to become a pure mirror to that person, but not parroting, not not just repeating back. A a lot of times people need help to go deeper. So you give back orally what the nutshell version is of what they're sharing. Just go very to the core of what they're saying. Like the salient point, you give it back. And then you might even Mm -hmm. challenge yourself to repeat, give back, why they might have shared that. And if you get it wrong or it's not quite on the mark, they'll let you know it even helps them. If if you give back what, why you think they might have shared that, then then oftentimes it helps them go even deeper. So that's, as far mm-hmm. as an exercise, I'd almost just say the next person you feel <laughs> is sharing something that has some depth to it, try that practice of just quieting your mind and then giving back a couple nuggets of what you heard and watch the miracles that happen because what happens is people feel safe and they get vulnerable because Mm -hmm. you're providing this safety net for them that's removed from judgment. You're not giving suggestions, opinions, or anything of you, from you. You're just a pure mirror to that person. And miracles yeah, and happen so, when we practice that. Yeah, we so rarely are listened to and attended to. Um, everybody, right. I mean, I know my brain is like on the next ten topics when <laughs> Me my too. son is often going, okay, right? <laughs> 
that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, especially when it's your um, son okay. or, you know. Right, it, exactly. It, it, it's but, hard. It's really challenging. I used to do workshops way back when on to help parents with, with teens. Mm. So, yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. I think that's could be in the same realm as uh, a partnership challenge, <laughs> if not more. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. With teens, it's it's. I mean that, but that pro- provides the the um, you know the groundwork for for romantic relationships. Like if you can get through the teen years, um, <laughs> and, and that's the parent, I'm telling true. you, <laughs> I learned boundary setting. You know, not 101, but like you know. 3.0. Um, <laughs> I I just feel like <laughs> it's it really and and I'm grateful for all that because you know when you're challenged to that degree when somebody's pushing up against you, um, that's when that's when your real skills come out. And so, uh, but with my son, he he does call me on the fact that I, I've lost interest. You know when he's talking sometimes, and he'll say, "Mom, what what are you thinking about now?" <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me come back. Let me come back to present. He doesn't say it in an angry way. He knows that that my brain is is firing, and I have to slow down. And yeah. so it, it is. It's important to practice this to to just slow down, to reflect back, to you know, give back the nuggets. And if you're wrong, it's okay because you can start a conversation because a person can come back and say. You know that's not exactly it. Here's here's what's going on for me. Yeah, they're going to um, feel hurt that, even even if they say no, yeah. that's not exactly the the fact that you are attempting to really understand and that you're showing that. Even if you get it a little mm-hmm. off, it's it's deepening the inner relationship that's happening. And and the other thing yeah. I would just want to say is a lot of times people that come to my workshops and such around communication they'll. I go, well, when am I going to get my turn or, you know, that kind of thing. Right, right, right. I'm le- I came here to learn assertiveness skills, and I don't, I don't want to listen anymore. I know how to do that. So what I usually tell people is that if you can give this gift, you're going to calm that person down emotionally to the extent that you will be so much better heard when, it's, when that person finally feels heard. You're going to mm-hmm. be able to give your truth and be heard by giving yeah. that gift of listening. Yeah, that's a lot of people don't see that, but that's just a good way to put it. And I remember watching an Imago therapy um, session where they actually used um, two, um, like, toys. One was a toy, like, rubber globe, of, you know, the uh-huh. earth, and the other one was, like, rubber heart. And the person who was listening had the heart, in front of them to show that their heart was open. Um, I know, I think it was the other way around. The person who was, who was listening sat on the globe to say that I can sit on my world right now, <laughs> you know? Oh. And, and then the person who was talking was talking with an open heart, and then they switched. So it was, oh, it was a really that. beautiful, isn't that nice? Like that symbolism yeah, really stuck beautiful. with me. And this this was like 12 years ago I saw this and it just really resonated. So I think that's an important thing to remember, that you're not going to lose yourself when you're listening, that you're, you're going to still be okay. And then you switch places and the other person will have an open heart. And, uh, right. So, yeah. Oh, my God, the time is gone. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so much more I want to talk to you about. Okay, so let's let's get to... Um, another really juicy topic. We'll try to get like a really quick answer to this if possible. Um, okay. I know that in dating, um, so a lot of people feel that it it takes time to to really set your standards for a, a healthy relationship, and um, that it shouldn't come out right away. So in the dating process, this is something um, that I am passionate about. That that people need to set the tone early on. So right. what what are some of the steps that they can take to create that type of relationship, even from the first date, the first phone call? I mean, can you give some, some hints on, on how they can do that? Oh, wow. Okay, well, we've already covered the foundational part of it, which is we need to become the one that we would want to be, you know, to attract the level that we're looking for. So so that foundation, because I really believe it starts from within. 
And so assuming mm-hmm. that's been covered <laughs> and, and also yeah. that we've evolved our vision of what we really want so we know we know what to say yes and what to say no to. <laughs> so so upscaled because mm-hmm. a lot of people that come to me, especially from the calling and the one work, you know they've had some really horrible experiences in love and and un, and so it's like clearing the slate first of no we're not going to repeat that pattern anymore and we're going to recognize the signs around that. So once we stand for what we really want and we've really evolved our vision around that, then there's skills and capacities that I really think we can do right from the get-go in dating because, you know, it's like uh, you were mentioning Imago therapy um, because I've done a lot of work with what Harville Hendricks has put out. And he says that, you know, we can use the dating as the um, training ground for a healthy relationship that we want to establish and right from the very beginning of getting to know someone. And so I go back to the whole thing around um, practicing deep listening when it's appropriate and also speaking our truth, which is with dating, that is a number of things. I have workshops on the dating process. I call it for the evolved single, but, (laughs) um, you know, speaking Mm. our truth can be, around setting parameters of what we're comfortable with and what we're not in dating. You know, like, for example, how far we're willing to go if it's a long-distance thing or how we're going to meet and not spend oodles of time on the phone forever or, you know, the technological way of connecting and different parameters, setting those parameters. And then when we're together in speaking our truths of what our values are, you know, what our interests, and so it's that nice balance between deep listening and speaking our truth. And also, when I say speaking our truth, I'm also including if some things start to happen that we're not really liking. Let's say the person comes late a lot or, or something happens that we're realizing, you know what, I, I'm not really okay with this. We learn healthy ways of setting boundaries as well. So I, that's the very short version. I have a like lots on this, but I you mentioned you wanted me to keep it brief, so that's yeah. what I did. Well, we we're we're really at time, and there's so much yeah. more to cover here. But this is I, I so agree with you. I think that people wait too long to speak up and to show up, and you really can do it and should do it from day one. Don't right. don't tolerate. Don't stuff your emotions and then implode. I think that we we really need to let people know our standards, but you have to first do this work. You have to be the one to attract the one. So I I, I love that, and I I think there's so much more. So people should get in touch with you. So let let them know (laughs) how they can find you. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, you want me to say some things? Well, one thing, I want to mention a couple gifts. Is it okay? Because I have some gifts that I um, have available. and I even have a special URL. My, my website is thrivinglovingrelationships.com, but um, the free gifts, I have a special URL for that, which is just TLR, those are the initials for my business, TLRfreegifts.com. Mm-hmm. And I have some things for singles. I have a series of brief talks and guided meditations to help people with their kind of inner game when they're getting ready to date and prepare them to magnetize in a a high level of a partner. Um, So I have some gifts around that. I also have one for couples. I don't know if we have couples on here, but it's a two-part video that has a questionnaire to assess your relationship. Um, And then I want to also offer, um, I I don't do this, I do this periodically, but I have an offer uh, available now for your audience, Sandy, which is that, if people go to uh, tlrspecialoffer.com, and it's offer, no S, um, they can get a huge discount. There's a little application form, and they can get a huge discount on my intensive Manifest Your Soulmate breakthrough session. That's for singles, and I have one also for couples. But So I would love it if anyone is interested in that to offer that to them. 
Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and we do have singles and couples. I actually know people personally who've told me they're married for a long time and they love listening to the show. I think, you know, oh. everything we share is applicable to both singles and couples. You know, it, obviously, if you're in a thriving relationship, you never stop growing. And so you want to <laughs> learn how to communicate better. You want to learn how to do all these things better. So I That's will true. post um, all these links on my show notes when I post a blog. Okay. And, um, yeah, so go visit Kim Bumberg at Thriving Loving Relationships, right? That's what it's that's yeah, in your Yeah, Thriving Loving Relationships. Um, thriving Loving com. Relationships. Yeah. Com. Yes. So thank you so much for being on the show today and sharing this amazing wisdom about how to have a thriving, loving relationship, Kim. Thank you. Oh, it's been an honor, Sandy. Thank you so much. Okay. And thanks so much, everyone, for listening in today. And I hope you go on your last first date very soon. Have a great day. (laughs) 